Well, welcome and uh, good morning again. It is great to be here with you this morning. Today we are in the middle of our series called Keeping It Real. And as Pastor Jeff said a few minutes ago, it looks a lot like the old series. And we're talking about the same things, parenting, spousing, and believing. We're just coming at them from a different angle. And the angle is we want to keep them real. We don't want them to be forced. We want them to be authentic. We want them to be real. We want them to be, as Jesus said, in spirit and in truth. Today, we're going to talk about making sure that we are raising our children and our grandchildren to have a real faith from the heart. Uh, Not a a plastic faith where they're just playing a part, but a real faith that's from the heart. Therefore, we have a slogan in this series. Remember the slogan from last week? I'll say the first part. We'll all say the rest of it. Keeping it real, it's about the heart, not about playing the part. Let's hit the book. It's Matthew chapter 12 is where we are today. So if you brought your personal Bible from home, I invite you to open it up to Matthew chapter 12. If you have a Bible app on your smartphone, punch up Matthew chapter 12. If you're at home watching on the live stream, you got no excuse. Grab your personal Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 12. We're starting at verse 9. And the first thing we're going to understand here this morning is that Jesus is in a synagogue on the Sabbath which recalls the third commandment, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now the religious leaders in Jesus' time interpreted this commandment very legalistically. And they made sure that everyone was in church or synagogue, which was their church, on the Sabbath, which for them was Saturday. And the way they did it was they made everything else illegal. I mean, literally, they had this long list of things that you couldn't do on the Sabbath. And uh, you couldn't go to work. You couldn't go to school. You couldn't ride your bike. You couldn't go for a picnic. You couldn't practice your hobby. You couldn't do anything. It pretty much left you with nothing else to do except for going to church, the, the synagogue, on the Sabbath. And so on one hand, that was a good thing, right? Because it got everyone to go to church. On the other hand, it was a bad thing because it forced people to go to church. And they ended up going, I would assume, a lot of times just because they were forced. And then Jesus came along and he reinterpreted that commandment to honor the, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. He reinterpreted it as, spoiler alert, about worshiping God from the heart. All right, let's listen in. Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. Going on from that place, he, Jesus, went into their synagogue. And a man was there with a shriveled hand. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they, the religious leaders, asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Now, uh, they know it's not lawful to heal on the Sabbath, It's on their list. They made the list. They know that healing is on the list. And they've made it illegal to heal on the Sabbath. But here's Jesus, a known faith healer. And here's a guy with a shriveled hand. So they want to make sure that Jesus knows that healing is on the list. Right? They're trying to trap him. Right? They're trying to say, hey, look, pal. You're not going to try to heal here on the Sabbath, right? Because it's against the rules. Instead, uh, why don't you just sit down and be quiet, and this is our show. We'll take things from here. I mean, they, they, they really were. They were telling Jesus, look, sit down and be quiet. But, you know, of course, it doesn't work out that way, right? He, Jesus then realizes that their hearts are not in the right place, that they're just trying to get people to play a part. And so he says to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus is pointing out that their hearts are in the wrong place, that they value the forms of religion, the traditions, the rules, the uh, the rituals, more than they value and care about this man, this fellow human being who is, in, in, is suffering. 
In fact, he points out that their hearts are so far out of joint that they care more about money and property, the sheep, than they care about this human being, their brother. So he says to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. I mean, they are really upset. They want to kill him. That's how big of a deal it was for them, for him to accuse them of not having their hearts in the right place. And he was, he was basically saying, hey, look, be, you need to get rid of these, the, the, your, all of your laws, all of your rules, your religious forms and your traditions and your rules that are keeping your heart from being in the right place. And that was threatening to them. They did not like that at all. Jesus was saying, hey, look, going to church and worshiping God needs to be from the heart. It can't be just playing a part, right? Which brings us back to our slogan, keeping it real. It's about the heart, not about playing the part. Let's apply this to parenting and grandparenting, right? We want to make sure that we raise our children, our grandchildren, to love Jesus and worship God from the heart. We want to make sure they don't grow up with a plastic part, a plastic faith where they're just playing a part. And the, the danger is that if we put the emphasis on the religious forms and the traditions and the rules and the rituals, that we will end up raising children who think that God and faith and religion and going to church is just all about the forms and the ritual, rituals and the traditions and the rules. And they will just go through the motions instead of having Jesus in their heart. Or worse, they end up growing up and thinking that religion is just all about this, the, the forms and the traditions. And, um, and that can be very dangerous, right? We want to make sure that doesn't happen. Here's an example. Prayer is a great example. I, you know me. I'm always encouraging our parents, our grandparents, to, to pray with their kids and develop re- routines of prayer, right? We might pray before meals. A lot, of, a lot of parents pray with their kids before bed or maybe first thing in the morning or maybe in the car on the way to school. Or We have these rituals, these times when we pray. And those, are, those rituals are good things because they, they help keep our hearts in the right place. See, there's nothing wrong with the religious forms. There's nothing wrong with the traditions and the rules and the rituals. They're good things when their purpose is to make sure our hearts are in the right place. But if they're not helping to, our heart, to keep our hearts in the right place, then they are of no value. And if the religious forms and traditions and rules and rituals are actually hurting us and keeping us from having our hearts in the right place, then we ought to just totally get rid of them. Now, I'm not saying that we should totally get rid of them. What I'm saying is that we should make sure that they have their appropriate purpose, which is to keep our hearts in the right place. So uh, it, it was a, a number of years ago when my, uh, my kids went through this, this phase of they would, they would say pray, uh, the, the common table prayer before dinner really fast, right? We'd sit down to pray, and, and Dad would start, and, and, and they would say, uh, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, let these guests be ours, blah, 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 right? And they would say it as fast as they could. And Henry would say, Dad, I can say that prayer as fast as a race car or as slow as a sloth, right? And, and I would say to him all the time, and say, Henry, you can say that prayer as fast or as slow as you want. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you say it from the heart, that you're truly grateful to God for this food and everything he's given us. See what I did? I made sure that he knows why we pray and that it has to be from the heart. And what I didn't do is make it about the ritual, about the form. I mean, I could have said, right? I could have said, no, 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 Henry. You're going to say it right along with mom and dad. You're going to say it in this, this regular tone of voice and this regular speed, and, and you're just going to do it that way. I want you to do it. That. And then I would have put the emphasis on the form. 
I would have put the emphasis on you got to do it the right way. And that puts the emphasis on, on the, the doing of it instead of the purpose of the doing it, which is to make sure our hearts are in the right place. Or here's one for all of us, right? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is this beautiful, powerful prayer. And what's so powerful about the Lord's Prayer is that it really has this ability to get our hearts into the right place, right? When you say that prayer, it just, it just centers your heart, it centers your life. But, uh, you know, there are some people who will tell you that you should say the Lord's Prayer a certain number of times a day or at certain times in the day. Or that if you say the Lord's Prayer enough, it'll make God happy. God loves it when you say the Lord's Prayer, so you do it just for the doing of it. And when that happens, we turn it into just this empty ritual, this, this thing that, that is actually hurting the real purpose to worship God and, and love Jesus from the heart. Or uh, this, is, this is something I think we've all done, right? Because, you know, we say the Lord's Prayer in church. Have you ever said the Lord's Prayer in church and, and you know, just kind of mumble along? Um, and maybe, maybe you can identify with this. Have you ever in church, right, we're all saying the Lord's Prayer, you're kind of mumbling, the words are coming out of your mouth, but you're thinking about something else? Right? Anybody? Am I the only one? I don't think so, right? We just mumble along and we turn it into this form where it's just the doing that's important when that's not true. The doing is the doing of it has no purpose other than to make sure our hearts are in the right place. Here's another example. And this is a challenge that I think a lot of parents face. And that is kids making noise and fooling around in church. And so just so you know, it never, ever bothers me when kids are making noise and having, you know, fooling around and whatever in church. It doesn't bother me at all. And uh, in fact, I love kids in church. And I do not mind at all when kids make noise and, and, and play around and fool around in church. I would much rather have that than have not kids in church. Or the worst thing, right? The worst thing you can do as a parent, and I'll just tell you, I'm preaching to myself as any, well as anyone else. I've done this too. And if when I say this, you realize, oh yeah, I've done that. I did that a lot. Um, you are forgiven, right? We are all forgiven, and God, uh, God gives us grace, and we're just not going to do it anymore, right? But here, here it is. There's the worst thing you can do to your kids in church. Shh. Sit still and be quiet. It's the worst thing you can do. Why? Because it teaches our kids that church is about behavior. It teaches our kids that, that going to church and God and faith and religion is about behaving a certain way and doing a certain thing, and it places the emphasis on the doing of it. So I, um, Henry's gotten a lot better of it now. He's, he's 10 now, but uh, boy, when he was five, six, seven years old, he was really, really difficult. And he would make a lot of noise in church and always constantly fooling around and bothering his his mother and people around him and and um, and he was he was he was just always it was it was just was crazy and so what I would do is uh, during the week sometime I would do it on Sunday right away but during the week at some point I would say to him you know Henry I've noticed that that in church you don't usually participate a whole lot with us you don't stand and pray with everyone you don't uh, sing the songs and praise Jesus from your heart like everyone a lot of times you're fooling around and making noise. And I just want you to know that that's okay. You're six. You're a six-year-old boy. It's okay. I understand. But I want you to know what the goal is. I want you to know that I'm praying that as you get older, you will want, in your heart, you will want to participate more. You will want to pray with the rest of us. You will want to sing the songs from the heart and praise Jesus from your heart. And my prayer is that as you get older, that'll, just, that'll happen. See what I did? I, I taught him what the goal is. I led his heart to be in the right place. And what I didn't do is tell him that he was doing something wrong, which would place the emphasis on the behavior. 
the forms, the rituals, the, the rules, the traditions are all good as long as they help us to put our emphasis on the heart. But if they're not, then we are thrown out. All right, here's a, um, uh, uh, one, one last story. I'll share the story. You're going to like this story. It's, uh, it took place many years ago when I was at the seminary. And I went to the seminary in St. Louis, and during those two, three years, I was uh, still on staff at a church in Michigan. So I was commuting back and forth a lot, and I would go home like every other weekend and do stuff at the church, and I work remotely and whatnot. And, and, uh, but I spent the bulk of that time in, in St. Louis. And uh, during this period of time, my church in Michigan was having a pictorial directory, right? You've seen these things where you sign up for a time, you go into the church, and you have a professional photographer, they take your photo, and then when it's all over, you get a book with everyone's photos in it and names and everything, right? And I really wanted to be in the pictorial directory. I was a seminary student, and I was on staff at the church. I wanted to be a part of that pictorial directory, but all of the dates and times that you could sign up to have your photo taken, I was in St. Louis. Well, the good thing is that the company that was doing this was a nationwide company, and they said, hey, we're doing a similar directory at a church in St. Louis. It was a Catholic church, and he said, they, they said, you can go to that Catholic church, and they'll take your photo, and, and, and you just tell them, give them the code number or whatever, and they'll make sure it goes into the, the Lutheran church in Michigan, their directory. And believe it or not, it worked. It totally worked. You want to see the photo? Here's, here's the photo. Check this out. Here's the photo. That's it. No, that's not it. Just kidding. That's not it. That's, see, if you're not laughing, it means you weren't here last week and you don't remember this photo from last week. You've got to go back and watch on stjohn.tv and watch last week's message. I have no idea who these people are. They, uh, I just found this on the internet. And um, no, I, I wanted to show you the photo of, of me that was taken that day, but I couldn't find it. I lost it, which is a bummer because I was really good looking in it. So... Anyway, so, the, so I, I have to take this photo. And, and the thing is, I wanted, for this photo, I wanted to wear my clerical collar, which they, they, they give you once you're in the seminary. And because I was going to be in this, you know, church directory, I wanted to be wearing my clerical collar. You know what I'm talking about? And so I, I, I go to this Catholic church to have my photo taken. Now, if you haven't if you've connected the dots already, you're ahead of me because I didn't connect the dots until I walk in the door, right? And there's this woman right there, and the first thing she says is, hello, Father. Right? I'm like, wait, what? Oh, I get it. Okay? So I said, I'm here for the pictorial directory, and she says, okay, down the hall, turn left in the gym. And I go in there, and as soon as I walk into the gym, there's another woman at the table, and she says, hello, Father. And I'm like, well, I can get used to this. Right? And uh, then she, she says, okay, yeah, you're next. Just wait over here. And when that family's done, the photographer will take your, your photo. So I'm just sitting there minding my own business and being very patient. And uh, this, this poor family, they're, it's, it's a, uh, a mom and a dad and three or four kids. And they're, uh, they're, she's, mom's trying to get all the kids arranged. And little Johnny, he is having nothing to do with this. He is just hating this whole experience. He doesn't like the clothes. He's pulling at his clip-on tie, you know what I'm saying? And he's, he's just messing around. She cannot get him to sit still and smile for, this, for the camera, right? And she's trying everything. She's trying to, you know, promising him ice cream and threatening time out. And she's doing all this stuff, and nothing's working. Finally, get this, right? She puts her hand on his shoulder. She points at me. And she says, Johnny, behave. The Father is watching. I'm like, lady, don't bring me into this. And literally, I'm like, don't bring God into this. Don't bring religion into this. Lady, don't use religion to control your children. Right? Don't, let, don't use God and religion and faith and going to church to control your children because now your children's just going to grow up thinking that's what it's all about. They're just going to grow up thinking that it's something that's used to control people and that it's, that it's empty and it's all about just behaving. And that's just the opposite of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, it says that, that, that your relationship with God is not based on your behavior. It's based upon your faith in Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. 
So we need to, we need to raise our children and our grandchildren with that focus. Christ crucified for the forgiveness of our sins. Not on the, the forms and the rituals and the rules and the traditions. All that stuff is good, but only if it points to Christ and make sure our hearts are in the right place. I'm going to invite you to stand now. Would you please stand with me? We're going to give a blessing to our parents because being a parent has never been more difficult. And it is, uh, so I, I just want to give a blessing to our parents. Father in heaven, would you please bless all of our parents, everyone in this room who has a child. And Lord, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tie the grandparents in too because grandparents are just so valuable and so important in the raising of our, our children, our grandchildren. I want to bless all of our grandparents as well. And I want, to, I, want you to, I want to ask your blessing, Lord, upon all of our efforts and prayers to raise our children to know your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior and to love him with all their hearts. Because that's what we want, Lord, more than anything else. We want our children and our grandchildren to know your Son as Lord and Savior. And to worship Him and love Him from the heart. And parents have a tough time, Lord. And I know there's parents in here in this room who know they've made mistakes, because we all have. And Lord, I, I, I just I, I just pray for those parents. We lift up all of our parents who have made mistakes. Uh, Lord, who, who might be even repenting right now in their hearts before you for the mistakes that they've made. And Lord, would you please forgive us all in the name of Jesus. Fill all of our parents with this sense of your grace that you can make up for our faults and our failings and our shortcomings. That you can, can keep our families centered on the gospel and the hearts of our children centered and growing on the gospel. You are an amazing God, Lord. And we celebrate you and we love you from the heart. Keep us centered there. Center our hearts. Center our lives. Center everything we are on your son Jesus, in whose name we pray.